Hola, sí. Buena tarde. Vale, perfecto. Me dicen que, que ya estamos. Bueno, pues... We are on air. So, uh, welcome everyone to this uh, second uh, red-green dialogue organized by Fundación Nos Origins and the Green European Foundation. It is the second dialogue. It's a cycle uh, that included the first uh, impact on, of COVID before summertime. The second dialogue has to do with the minimal vital income and uh, if it's uh, equivalent to, um, the, the, to, other, to other formats. And I would like to thank you, the presence of uh, the three uh, people that are here with us today. I think uh, this is a, was, it's a top cartel, it's a top group. It's three people that on their own could uh, generate a huge debate, but the combination of the three is also very interesting. Uh, Ay Navidad is uh, uh, an MP on, from Comú Pudem, person to, that has a connection with the world of unions, Comisiones Obreras, and she uh, has worked in the, in the Congress to cover issues related with the labor world, labor relationships, and she's a person that can contribute a lot with her opinion from a, from a political uh, uh, standpoint, okay? On the other hand, we have Pepe Fernandez Alberto, politologist. He's a researcher from the Higher Center of uh, Re Scientific Research, and uh, he can tell us about this min uh, minimum vital income concept. We can use him to, to, to learn about his standpoint, his context, and also whatever he wants to offer as a contribution, the differences he can see with basic income. And then we also have Philip van Perix, any person who's read things about basic income uh, is a person of reference. He's a person of, of reference for, has been, he's been a reference person of, for a long time when very few people talked about basic income. Well, he was speaking about that and therefore he should be here. He had to be here. He can tell us a lot about any theoretical or practical consideration about basic income. Well, with no further ado, I'd like to say thank you to those of you who are here. Any questions you have, you can send them both to the chat if you are following through Zoom or in through YouTube and I will group them and I will gather them and at the end of the three interventions, I will uh, ask the questions to the speakers. But in this new stage of our foundation, there's been a, an image change, there's a new course with new activities and we are um, happy to show you a video clip uh, how you do the Green European Foundation, introducing what is basic income, a very pedagogical video, but it may be interesting to, to have a framework of reference to determine what the basic income is and how it is connected to, to Europe, because there is a strong debate in Europe on how to combine a basic income in the European framework, an element to consider. So um, click uh, on the video and we'll be able to watch it. Basic universal European basic income, a, res a recipe for resilience. The COVID-19 crisis and the expected recession are evidence saying that even if the public services in Europe are amongst the best in the world, they cannot guarantee the welfare of our residents. Our welfare state is missing some elements that uh, tax the most vulnerable people. Climate change and uncertain future of employment also generate more doubts the increase of inequality will condemn millions to structural poverty, denying children the equal opportunities when they are born. Many think that we have to bet for a more resilient and balanced model. It's the moment of a basic European, uh, basic income in Europe, the European uh, basic 
uh, income is a minimum income that each person in Europe, not each family, but each person would receive. And this European basic income has great advantages. It's benefiting more women, young people, and those who are uh, working on paid labor. It would reach those that are mar socially marginalized, fighting against poverty. It protects us against exploitation and precarious work. And it's not reducing the search for uh, employment, but it does reduce the anxiety or the fear about losing it. It's not just quality, it's a redistribution of wealth that empowers people, giving us sa greater safety. And it is a non automatic protection against any crisis, increasing the resilience of our societies. Sounds good, doesn't it? But how is this going to be financed? First, through uh, reform in personal reform personal income tax taxing, the richest in our states creating environmental taxes uh, and taxing capital gains and land value, basic re income reduces bureaucracy and administrative costs, and we shouldn't reduce the resources uh, having to do with basic uh, services like education or healthcare systems. It may sound radical, but it's not unachievable. And to build sustainable and resilient societies, we have to explore new ideas. That's why the Green European Foundations launched a project to combat preconceived ideas while asking uh, in Europe a debate about unconditional basic income. Add to this debate and share the message. Thank you. Bueno, muy bien. Well, good, good enough. I hope you liked it. With no further ado, I'd like to give the floor to Aina so that she can start and, and give us her opinion. Well, thank you for having uh, invited uh, me. It's uh, such a pleasure to be here uh, with Pepe and Philippe and, and congratulate New Horizons Foundation because they are developing very necessary activities. Let me start with, with this topic. I think that basic income is just a proposal and proposals on their own do not have to be good or bad on their own. They can be depending on the context where they are implemented. And it's where, this is where I would like to start with the context where we are standing and why it may or it may not be adequate to, to, to hear about this proposal. In our society, we live uh, a crisis that uh, is totally unknown. We don't know how important it is socially, economically, and in the labor market, deeply uh, rooted with the crisis of 2017. Oh, seven, I'm sorry. What is the answer that politicians gave? Sometimes this, this concept may be unfair, but the answer that was given is that at that time, it was a crisis that had a financial origin at the time of uh, totally incredible debt, where it was, where they, they asked the question, who was going to pay for the internal devaluation, who ultimately had to pay for all that debt? And the answer was overwhelming. Workers, and well, we uh, had a, a reduction in our welfare state, which currently is, we are still paying very visually, unfortunately, due to the uh, COVID crisis. I think this crisis is totally different. We do not really know, uh, as I said before, the importance of it, but it definitely it is not a financial crisis. I would like to call it a transformation crisis. Transformational crisis, a crisis just to find the point of optimism or, or a new horizon on how to approach it and how to work in political terms of this crisis. I call this transformational crisis because I don't think it's COVID, the origin of the crisis. COVID is a, a, an acceleration of it all. It's a transformational crisis that affects state administrations and all the other spheres of uh, uh, life protection systems, uh, healthcare, and our school systems. This increases the transformations that uh, were happening, and it, they increase the emergency of giving an answer to, to all of them. It's a crisis that I think we can say that we will not escape uh, in the same initial point we have started with it. We are going back to the, uh, the year 2010, and we will not know the world as we knew it two years ago. It'll be a different world, and it'll depend on the answers we give, how uh, this will be newly sketched. And I believe that the question is not who's going to pay for the crisis. It, this question will be answered depending on what uh, our lives should be like. Who is going to lead transformation that will happen? And what are the interests of this transformation? And this will, question will be answered 
depending on who leads the crisis and what are the interests to lead the crisis. This affects all spheres. This is discussion happening in the European Union in the recent uh, weeks and, and months. I think that we all are all aware of the fact that we cannot respond in the same way as we did it in the year 2008. Even the European Central Bank is aware of this, even with the monetary policy. I think that Draghi, when he left, it was very clear. We are all aware of the fact that we cannot answer in the same way. And this means that uh, we have to add money. We have to eat money on an empty bucket. Uh, we're not going to recuperate this money. There cannot be any counterparts that affect so drastically the welfare state. And this means basically that it is impossible to approach this crisis without a fiscal reform that is at the level of the needs we have as a state, as a society, and as people. It is impossible. World well, countries are totally aware. The Netherlands, the Luxembourg are totally aware of, of this fact. This is what we're talking about, doing or not doing, or having or not having a fiscal reform to answer the needs we have. And they are aware of the facts of, of the alternatives and the proposal we are making is a new fiscality. And this leaves them without a business model. That's what they are defending on in a nutshell. They had the fruits of uh, the work of uh, all Europe and they defend their model of, of making business or doing business. And they are willing to, to agree or reach an agreement with uh, uh, the extreme right uh, powers. And this is what we have at stake if we connect it to our country, when we talk about this struggle, Onidas Podemos or Como Podem was able to correctly read the question or what we are dealing with. What are the interests that are leading this, this new transformation? And one of the answers in this case, or the proposals that the response uh, or, or that offers uh, an answer to in this framework is the minimum vital income. Uh, it, it tends to tries to give an answer, a different answer, different from what we had in the year 2008, and trying to sketch a framework and to determine who's chairing the, and leading this new transformation actively. And this will be probably the public administration and the state. And the active part uh, will be a part of this necessary transformation. Being co-responsible and, and, and trying to, to invest uh, in the in the public space and in the private companies. When we talk about minimum vital uh, income beyond this the, the, the specificity of it, I'm sure we could be very critical about it. And we had to be very critical because we have to be responsible considering what we are dealing with. When you talk about minimal vital income, we are speaking about freedom. Because if a person cannot guarantee paying rent or, 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 you know, having food to eat in his or her fridge, they're not free to choose, free to move, free to do. So the minimal uh, vital income has to do, has to be part uh, of a free life and guaranteeing new rights and not to just re reduce or eliminate rights. This is a proposal that is born not only around ju social justice, but also about uh, economic efficiency. It is necessary to maintain the capacity of consumption of people and it, it tends to give an answer. And it is also a new way to understand that this is an expense, but it's rather an investment in social terms so that no one lags behind being able to reduce inequality. This should be the goal of any social policy. Having said this, if we say that this means freedom, guaranteeing uh, rights and social justice, we should also say that the proposal we have on our tables is insufficient. It was born while being insufficient. It can be improved. The issue related to criteria that are quite locked and closed with respect to the profiles they are reaching is far from being a universal proposal so that we can understand it with a, 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 a scope wide enough as to reach to all people that need it. And I reckon that it is fair to say that this is a, uh, well, a correct proposal in the correct framework, but the definition has to be improved because we are at a transformation crisis. We are in a welfare state, and therefore we are speaking about our pro social protection system. And I think that the question we had to ask as a society is that we do not currently deserve to 
continue speaking about little patches, little uh, band-aids. This is what we do with political proposals. We are at a crisis that needs to be approached. And with the main question, what is the protection model we want for our society? And depending on this uh, question, we will have to connect it to what money we need and what fiscal reform we need to do. And this, uh, in parallel, uh, leads us to reivindicate work as a concept and as an element that allows us to have access to, to further guarantees of rights as an active agent to defend citizens and to support agent, uh, citizens in all crises. Many people say, well, there's not a, uh, we don't have a job. And this is one of the answers we find uh, from the right wing. But also this has been uh, an active answer, a, a very regular answer. Uh, we are also told that there is no work, that we are in a labor crisis. And in parallel, we, they are telling us that we have a huge deficit of uh, healthcare staff, of uh, um, doctors, uh, nurses, uh, uh, the elderly care systems, but they say that we are, are lacking jobs. Well, they, we either need new staff, uh, new teachers, or there's no work. So either one, but both at the same time cannot be possible. If you need new jobs, but you say that there are no jobs, well, there is a mismatch. We do not have a labor problem. The problem actually is that the jobs that the society require are not supported by private investment and they are not supported by public investment because, because they do not exist currently. And I think this is very important. That's why I would like to underscore uh, this the state administrations etc have to uh, uh, accept a, a totally proactive attitude and they have to lead this uh, crisis around not the uh, social answer but it has to do with uh, labor with uh, a more protagonist uh, attitude with respect to this question why don't they do it why haven't they done this because of a dogmatism they understood that the uh, state didn't have to intervene in that uh, economic strategy this is totally uh, an error and secondly resources that's why let me finish with the second idea which i think is fundamental the necessary fiscal reform uh, that we have to to implement we have four ideas and let me this, and this will be the end of my presentation firstly what are the interests that lead to this transformation secondly the need of thinking more integrally when reforming our system of social protection integrally not little patches not single proposals but integrally thirdly labor well having a fair and, and, and job that responds to the needs of people and finally but last but not least fiscal reform because basically without the fiscal reform all the other proposals the proposals that we can put on our tables will just be dreams what dreams as she says that will only be dreams and not realities that's why we have to find the money what are the interests and the, and who's going to will will have and what is the leaders that we are are going to to head this transformation well let me give them the floor to the rest of our colleagues pepe you have the floor well thank you Mark, and thank you to the European uh, Foundation for having invited me. It's fantastic to be here. Uh, I'm very happy to, to see you all. I, I knew Philippe and, and Mark, but didn't know. I haven't won. Nice to eat meeting you. I'm trying to connect to what was said. I'm in a position uh, which is quite complex. I'm a politologist uh, and I'm a scholar and I work in the Ministry of Inclusion. And one of the things that we did is what we are going to be speaking with. I'm not going to defend what we have done in our political group and I will try to use my politologist hat and connect it to this question that we have, what is the relation of this public policy with uh, 
la renta Not básica, only sino con la income, filosofía, yo creo, que hay detrás de la propuesta de la renta básica. Eh, lo primero que voy a hacer tres all, comentarios generales y sobre todo para ser breve y por el tiempo para, para el debate. Y primero, que el primero es 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 que Trataba de huir un poco de este debate que, del que parte debate que, que, que un poco impregna la reflexión sobre la renta básica entre el universalismo de las políticas públicas y la universidad de las políticas públicas. Y digo que no sé con qué éxito y me gustaría saber vuestras opiniones, pero la reflexión que hacíamos era que necesitamos, tenemos unas restricciones fiscales, políticas, de las que voy a hablar un poco, las que tenemos que operar, y tenemos una voluntad de responder a esta demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de renta básica, de una manera que no sea una demanda de Labor market. This is a bias that most welfare states request, and in particular our state, all the benefits, the compensations from distribute distribution and compensation have to be connected to all those years you have worked. The amount of your pension depend on your labor contribution, and this connect this what the state offers to citizens considering their performance, well, this should be uh, you know, reconsidered, I think, or revisited. This is very
que nuestro, nuestro objetivo último en el fondo es habilitar a todos los ciudadanos darles los recursos para que puedan participar so they can fully participate in the lives of their societies and this uh, uh, possibility so that citizens can participate in the social life has an economic origin or cause so some economic support measures are important but we should consider la activación en el mercado de trabajo y la activación en el mercado de trabajo que tenían que hacer eso a formación el, a acceso un acceso más eh, generoso más more generous eh, access to más adecuado a las necesidades de la gente en términos de sanidad de cuidados de educación etcétera Education, Entonces, yo creo que también ahí so, en la idea de los that, uh, itinerarios de, de inclusión en los que proponemos incorporar que los beneficios de la prestación, hemos intentado salir de este uh, también como debate perverso de que el único objetivo de esta prestación es, es incorporar a los from, ciudadanos uh, en el mercado de trabajo. Y por supuesto hay una parte de la prestación que está orientada a definitely. activar en el mercado de trabajo aquellos there. que están desempleados y sufren exclusión laboral, pero hay una parte, excluded, la, la forma en que visualizamos estos itinerarios de inclusión que están dando no están centrados exclusivamente en esto y que el objetivo final que persiguen es esta goal participación goal plena del individuo en la, en la sociedad. Y esto yo creo que también society, podemos jugar con qué grado de éxito la mamá actual lo consigue, pero es una cuestión que creo que, que viene de este debate sobre la renta básica y la necesidad de dignificar la vida de los ciudadanos con dependencia de, de, de los vaivenes económicos que surgen. Independientemente de la economía económica, y luego la changes. última cosa es que And también estamos con una preocupación más eh, uh, digamos, doméstica o domestic concern, europea or es European una concern. reorientación general de It's las prioridades de la intervención del Estado de las políticas públicas of public, uh, y es el, el, las, el, el, el la reorientación hacia, hacia grupos que estaban sistemáticamente desatendidos. ¿no? En el caso, o sea, la definición más, más, más digamos, concreta es que es una prestación muy focalizada por los requisitos de renta y patrimonio eh, que cualifican para su acceso a los más vulnerables, vulnerable pero sí tienen, to these en, tienen en cuenta pues, las diferentes realidades, realidades eh, vitales en las que estos individuos eh, viven, sus, eh, eh, la, las composiciones de hogares, eh, la monoparentalidad en, 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 en una parte de ellos, la labor estructura de pobreza infantil que tenemos en España y esto también, And esta this, reorientación all these elements, de preocupaciones uh, yo creo que también es, de, de respecto de la intervención de las políticas públicas to the public policies, también tiene que ver con una reflexión de la, 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 la propuesta de renta básica que tiene que ver con la satisfacción de las políticas públicas para responder a los problemas de desigualdad y de acceso a las oportunidades en nuestras economías. Y la última reflexión que hemos hecho aquí donde puedo preguntar, a lo mejor estas dos reflexiones las podía haber hecho antes de... Maybe this, this other other considerations de, 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 I could have digamos, done. Con, we, 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 we encontrado pocas variaciones en estas dos reflexiones. Before, eh, si hecho antes de haber estado maybe I could eh, have uh, en el de este, de given a different vital, uh, image de, uh, no haber if, en él, pero if I had not been eh, a participant, an active participant meses, ¿no? with the minimum vital income. Eh, But my final consideration here la, is the following. De la It's de, the de la issue of the eh, que ha political variability. Una, que esto es también una cuestión importante de debatir, yo he leído mucho y, y creo with the fact that de, de la, mi experiencia eh, ha cambiado un poco mi opinión hacia, hacia el siguiente punto, que es que mi percepción es que los problemas de gestión de las políticas that públicas, que, se, public, que es uno de los argumentos centrales, public policy, no diría, no es uno de los argumentos centrales, no se enfatiza mucho a la hora de proponer la renta básica. Mi sensación es que es un argumento que a veces se exagera en el exceso. Por dos motivos. En parte, porque las políticas con la ambición universal tienden a ser más complejas de ser a la hora de ser implementadas en el día a día de lo que haces. Muchas veces, en la experiencia, en la experiencia del COVID hemos tenido muchas propuestas de fuera de COVID pues lo que es el Estado lo que debería dar es of, un cheque de mil fact, euros a todos los individuos y en la que viene hacemos un cuento y aquí en el que le ha ido bien y en el que le ha ido mal 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 y en el que
are going to be implemented with the, the administration, with the income tax ministries, with legal requisites. Uh, proved to be more complex and uh, unreal than one would think because they are very naive. And also, implementing policies with a certain complexity sometimes are also exaggerated. Let me just give you an example that doesn't have to do directly with this, but during the pandemic, the government of Spain, one of the policies of compensation was for freelance workers, offering them a compensation compensation, basic compensation to those that had to close their businesses down due to the pandemic, or that had a great reduction of income. And the debate was, should this be a universal thing, or, as we did here, was something not universal, but quite generous. So this compensation was offered to nearly half, or nearly half of the freelancers in Spain had access to it. There were some prerequisites in the area, in different areas, in different professional areas, that led some to, to have access to, to, to it. But this, not, this did not uh, mean huge complexity in the implementation or many complaints. In fact, part of the requisites and the documents required and how rigorous the ministries are, are being when checking the data and because of the nature of this regulation, maybe this is generating a certain pace um, that is slower than expected. I believe that uh, in the mid long term basis, uh, this issue will be uh, merged into the background to see how many people are having access to these benefits. Uh, and the reading we do of this minimum vital income should be worse than many of the compensations. It will actually be better than many uh, of uh, the compensations that we have had in Spain and that work well. Uh, this is part of the, uh, the benefits that we get. Sometimes uh, the devil is in the details here. The second aspect in the political feasibility is the support uh, of public uh, opinion. I tend to think that we have to generate proposals and they will generate a, a wave of social support that make them permanent in time. This is a possibility. Another way is to ensure, make sure that the support we get to these policies, policies is not unanimous, it's not big enough so that their continuity in time is not present. And I have a well, I don't have a very clear position in this debate. There are positions to deliver that both arguments are valid, but in a context where we see the, the party polarization, the political party polarization, we should forget the issue of, of achieving great coalitions, not in terms of, of parties, but social support to the proposals that make them unchangeable. This may lead us to some levels of frustration, depending on how ambitious our policies are, but if we generate a policy that also includes a big degree of consensus, as we did in the past, and that are unchangeable or irreversible, I believe this would be a very important argument that we should not forget about, mainly if we think about the long term versus the short term, how the welfare model will be in the European societies in 10, 20 years' time versus how the income, uh, the citizen income will be in Italy or in Spain in the coming six months. And the final element, which is fiscality, I know. talked about this, and it's a, a key element. How much uh, opposition can we expect from these uh, initiatives? 
una transformación, one, eh, ya no digo de la transformación básica, pero una adopción de políticas públicas o de la adopción de los principios en los que hablábamos antes requieren un cambio de, de fiscalidad sobre todo si queremos ser eh, eh, ambiciosos. Y yo creo que aquí hay buenas noticias y malas noticias. Malas noticias, eh, ahora yo creo que es un momento complicado para promover grandes reformas fiscales que puedan, digamos, ir en el bolsillo de muchos ciudadanos, sobre todo en el bolsillo de muchos ciudadanos, sobre todo en el bolsillo de muchos ciudadanos. Pero buenas noticias, pensando yo creo en el panorama general, hay evidencia de que hay muchas cosas que se han hecho en las que la política pública tiene que ser mejorada. Hay propuestas en las que la propensión de la ciudadanía a contribuir fiscalmente a un Estado más generoso, towards a more generous, a more ambitious state with more capacity to protect the welfare of citizens, education, health care, etc. is greater now than it was before the pandemic. And this follows a line of literature, how crises that generate a certain degree of some certainty no solo la incertidumbre generalizada, sino también algo General que es importante, es decir, injusticia eh, por lo eh, no, sé, level, eh, asimétrico del impacto de la crisis en unos colectivos frente a otros, genera of, un of, sentimiento of crisis, de tolerancia hacia la fiscalidad que, que otros generates un an attitude towards fiscality that people would have. Y esto yo creo que sí que es importante, porque si, al, si, because, uh, si al, la, mi explicación preferida por qué de los años 80, a partir de los años 80, a partir de los años 80, hemos observado una, observed, eh, digamos, movimiento de ciertas políticas certain económicas of, of certain hacia la derecha, muchas veces tendemos the right. a privilegiar las explicaciones del lado de la oferta, por así decirlo, de cada partido político, es que han you repartido know, con mensajes, digamos, de eh, derecha o de la invitación a posibilidad a fortalecer right, en la capacidad de influencia de determinados lobbies o de determinados sectores, sin desmerecer estas explicaciones. Yo creo que una, una, una that, uh, explicación muy importante de por qué en las últimas décadas del siglo XX hemos observado una cierta derechización de las políticas de la opinión pública towards the change of, sobre todo of the public opinion, opinion because the public opinion has gone towards the right when speaking about fiscality. Yo, Taxes is going to benefit people that is not like me. The state is a black box where I don't really know where, no sé where taxes come gastos. into, but I, don't, I do know how they come into, but I don't know the, the exit. Uh, the, the, the exit door. The citizens should see themselves as potential beneficiaries, if not now, well, in the future, and then eh, elements such as the pandemic can change the perspective of citizens and how the capacity of the no state to protect cannot be compared to other mechanisms that the, the, market, the, the market has. Eh, well, this is something that may be changing some attitudes. There's a space of opportunity in many of the things that Aina just said. And, and let me leave it here, because I think I spoke more than I was supposed to. But I'm sure that Philippe has many interesting things to, to say. Thank you. Thank you, Pepe Philippe. You have the floor. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for the invitation first, uh, which uh, enables me to understand better uh, both the content and uh, the motivation behind the uh, Ingresso Minimo Vital. Um, I was asked to answer a number of questions, which uh, I'll do uh, very briefly. The first one is, what's the difference between the Renta Basica, what are the crucial differences between the Renta Basica and the Ingresso Minimo Vital? Secondly, why do people uh, defend basic income against uh, the existing uh, types of uh, guaranteed minimum income? Thirdly, uh, could I say something about uh, the most recent or uh, ongoing experiments about basic income and what can we uh, uh, learn from them? And finally, is the ingresso uh, minimo vital a step uh, towards uh, the basic income? Okay, very quickly. So first, uh, what are the key differences? There are three. Uh, a basic income is uh, first uh, strictly individual, which means that uh, uh, how much you get it and uh, whether you get it is independent of uh, your household situation. If uh, you have a basic income, you go and live uh, with uh, someone in the same situation as you. you, the level of your basic income is not reduced. If you go and live with someone who has 
his or her own income from work, uh, you still receive your basic income. Under the existing schemes, uh, including uh, the uh, ingresso minimo vital, this is not the case. One takes into account the household situation. And the same holds for all the existing similar schemes, like the Revenu de Solidarité Active, uh, which uh, is the name given more recently to the French uh, uh, Revenu Minimum d'Insertion. It's also the case for the so-called Hartsphere in Germany. It's the case for the Reddito di Cittadinanza uh, in Italy and other schemes uh, elsewhere. They are not strictly individual, they are household based. Second difference, a basic income is uh, not a means tested, which means that you receive it whether you are rich uh, or poor. Um, the, the level of the basic income, the right of the, to the basic income is not um, uh, modified, the right is not abolished uh, if you earn an income from your work. Does that mean that it makes the rich people richer? Of course not, because the rich people will have to pay in some way for their own basic income and indeed for the basic income of a number of people who are not as rich as they are. That's the second key difference. Of course, the Reddito Minimo Vital, like the other schemes, are uh, schemes that are targeted at the poor, at the poorer parts of the population. And so they are uh, focused on people because of the lack of an income or because of an insufficient income from other sources. Um, like all the social assistance systems have been ever since they were first invented at the beginning of the 16th century. And uh, thirdly, uh, is uh, the third difference is that the basic income is obligation free. That is, uh, there is no uh, work requirement. You are not um, as a counterpart for getting the income, you are not supposed to be available uh, on the labor market. If you have a job and give it up, you are still entitled to a basic income. You have it when you work, you have it when you give up voluntarily a job. So these are the three uh, key differences um, between what has now been called ever since uh, the, this little network initially, now a worldwide uh, a network uh, and beyond the basic income, first European network, now Earth network. So that's how basic income was defined by them. So from uh, the 1980s uh, onward, and it's uh, the definition that was then taken up uh, uh, worldwide today. And so three key elements, which makes it unconditional in those senses. So strictly individual, universal in the sense of not means tested, and uh, obligation free in the sense of uh, un, uh, not submitted to conditions of participation in the labor market. Two, why do people defend it? Um, well, of course, for a large number of reasons, but I'll just give two which may be particularly relevant for a red green encounter like uh, this evening. In a way, the, the most uh, radical way of justifying it um, was um, uh, already encapsulated in the title of an article I published in the 1980s, and that was then uh, uh, translated, including uh, with a number of comments on it, in, um, by uh, Zona Abierta. I don't know whether it's a journal that still exists, but uh, so it's a left wing. Uh, sort of academic political uh, journal, and the title was A Capitalist Road to Communism. And so one radical way of defending a basic income consists in saying, well, let us just uh, be loyal to these ob this fundamental objective that Marx, Karl Marx, shared with the so-called utopian socialists. And what was that? It was communism, understood not as a collective ownership of the means of production, but understood as a society in which people uh, contribute according to their capacities, voluntarily, without being paid for it, while at the same time they receive according to their needs, without needing to pay for it. And so, as a basic income grows relative to GDP per capita in a society, you could say that 
people in that society will contribute more and more, not because they are forced to, because they have an unconditional basic income, but because work has been transformed in such a way that it has become attractive enough. Attractive because of the quality of the human relations in, in, uh, in that job or because the intrinsic interest uh, of the job or because of the feeling that this job is being useful. And at the same time, an increasing part of the social product is being distributed according to needs. Mm? So because the basic needs, some basic needs shared, shared by everyone are being covered by this basic income. And so in this, from this point of view, you say, well, what we need to fight for is a society in which it will be possible, as Marx put it, to write on our banners from each according to his or her capacities to each uh, to his uh, according to his or her needs and so and in order to get that we you need this unconditional income which at the same time enables gives people the bargaining power that makes enables them to refuse uh, shitty jobs but at the same time doesn't uh, trap them in a situation of unemployment because of exclusion because they can combine that basic income with jobs, including poorly paid jobs, but jobs that are attractive in themselves because they correspond to their real vocation, because they give them the sort of training which they will need in order to get more interesting or uh, better rewarded jobs. So that's one way, I think, which is present to some extent. I still had yesterday uh, an interesting discussion with a group of uh, Italians, uh, more or less based in uh, Bologna, which, uh, who call themselves accelerationists, and they uh, defend the idea that we should promote technical change, uh, because technical change, if it's uh, an intelligent sort of technical change, will enable us to reach this situation of abundance, of course, with frugal uh, needs, frugal desires, not uh, consumerism, that will make it possible to organize society in this way with people no longer obliged to work and yet be no, no longer obliged to work because they have enough to satisfy their needs and um, and, and and so and nevertheless uh, have something sustainable of that sort so that's one way you could say sort of a radical left way of uh, uh, seeing um, uh, basic income of course deeply heretical because it says well let's use the powerful dynamics of capitalism, which Marx described so well, rather than believing that uh, the collective ownership of the means of production as experimented in various ways in a number of places in the world, including a few remaining ones uh, today, uh, rather than believing that that uh, would um, enable us to reach uh, that situation of abundance. And then there is another uh, way of um, uh, another uh, among several but I think a very important uh, way of defending uh, the idea of basic income which you could call the, the green way or one of the green ways of defending it and that's encapsulated in the in the subtitle of the book I published uh, with one of my colleagues um, uh, a couple of years ago with Harvard University Press and has, has been published in Spanish also in Mexico under the title uh, Ingreso Basico and the subtitle was A Radical Proposal for a Free Society and a Sane Economy. And what is a sane economy? It's an economy that doesn't destroy the people and that doesn't destroy the planet. And how, why, I mean, because basic income is not the only instrument we need to do that, uh, but uh, it is a, a central instrument for that purpose. Why? Because, and that was the okay, case from the 1980s, and the standard answer from the left and from the right at the time, faced with uh, massive unemployment, in particular youth unemployment, was growth, growth, growth. Because growth, we generate jobs, and jobs is what we need in order to fight unemployment and to fight poverty. Of course, even in the 1980s, a number of people thought, uh, a decade after uh, the alarm, um, uh, a 
peel, along the peel of the Club of Rome, thought, well, growth, 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 this is not going to lead us to anything uh, sustainable, anything desirable. We need to find another way of addressing uh, mass unemployment. And why not, why not give people an unconditional income so that they can reduce their working time voluntarily, so that they can uh, interrupt their career in such a way that other people will be able to access these jobs rather than just believe that growth, uh, we need more and more jobs, and, and in order to get more and more jobs, you need more and more growth. So basic income was proposed from that time and still today as a way of addressing the problem of involuntary unemployment partly by uh, creating voluntary unemployment, that is enabling people to work part-time or to uh, give up uh, uh, looking for a job uh, for a, uh, completely for, for a period, thanks to the unconditionality of uh, this uh, basic income. Uh, so that was so the, the, the way in which one could uh, address the problem of unemployment without destroying the planet, and of course, this was also a way of uh, uh, avoiding uh, the destruction of the people because the number of people in our societies work too much. Uh, they are sick because they work too much. And so these people would be given the opportunity to work less and because of the obligation free nature of, um, of basic income. But at the same time, uh, other people who are sick because they cannot get to a job uh, and the job for most of us, indeed for all of us, to some extent, uh, a sort of paid participation in the economy is an important part of what we want in life. Well, some people are, are, don't have access to that, but these people, thanks to a basic income, get access to that, partly because a basic income is then a sort of flexible, intelligent way of sharing the existing employment, but also because it operates as a subsidy for a job but a subsidy for a job that is chosen. It's very different from a wage subsidy, which gives the bargaining power to the employer, say to the potential employee who can decide uh, whether the job is a shitty job or on the contrary, a job that is worth taking, even if it's badly paid or irregularly paid, self-employed or, um, or uh, an internship, etc. So this, these are two uh, of the ways in which uh, basic income is being defended uh, today. Um, and so one says, well, we need this mobilizing utopia of a society that will not be geared by, by profit or, or sort of uh, uh, totally controlled by uh, uh, a powerful state. We need some society in which people will contribute voluntarily according uh, to their capacities and receive according to their needs. It's in fact the communism of Wikipedia, right? That's what we do with Wikipedia. We contribute according to our knowledge and we take out of it according to our needs. Well, Wikipedia is a fantastic utopia, uh, communist utopia at the heart of uh, cognitive uh, capitalism. Well, so one justification is to say, well, let's do that. And, but not just in this, little uh, segment of uh, our social and economic life that's Wikipedia, but throughout society. And the other uh, justification, green justification says, well, let's have, let's have a sane economy, one that doesn't destroy the people and doesn't uh, destroy the planet. And for that, you need this combination of universality and the fact that you can combine the benefit with work and uh, obligation freeness in the sense that you can give up jobs that uh, uh, you regard as uh, lousy jobs, as uh, bullshit jobs or, or whatever. So these are two of the justifications, of course, that take each of them is affected uh, by a number of can be formulated in a new way because of the climate crisis, because of uh, the corona crisis, uh, because of uh, automation. But in fact, uh, there are really two of the models in which uh, uh, sort of structure the arguments in favor of basic income. Thirdly, just a, a word then about some of uh, about the experiments. Uh, let's first say that many of the experiments or pilots or whatever are simply irrelevant to uh, so-called basic, in basic income experiments are simply irrelevant to our situation 
in a country like Spain or Germany or Belgium or France, whatever, uh, because they are done in countries, in less developed countries, where there is no, or practically no social protection, sometimes only for the handicapped or for the elderly. And then a basic income uh, is, most of the effects of a basic income is simply the same sort of effect that uh, a means-tested uh, guaranteed minimum income system would have. You just take people out of extreme poverty, so the experiments in India or in Kenya now are of that sort. And tr trying to draw uh, inferences about saying, look how good basic income would be from those experiments is not serious because you could use exactly the same experiments to say what we need is something like uh, a conditional guaranteed minimum income, something focused uh, at the poor. Um, but uh, there are some experiments that are more relevant to us. Uh, the main one being the Finnish experiment, the experiment conducted in Finland uh, between the 1st of January 2017 and the 31st of December 2018, and of which we only got the full results uh, um, three months ago or so. And, and then there is, I was asked to say something about that, there is a German an experiment about to be started with quite a bit of publicity around it uh, in, in Germany. Uh, the most serious experiment by far in methodological terms uh, of all those conducted in developed countries is the Finnish experiment. But it is very, very uh, narrow because it's, uh, it is, you could say it's a real experiment about the basic income, but uh, the, the sample consists exclusively of people who are long-term unemployed uh, most of these people have never worked. All these people uh, were entitled before to the existing scheme, uh, which 560 euros per person and per month, which is similar to the existing scheme in Finland, which you could say is roughly analogous to the ingresso minimo vital. So it exists, it has been existing in Finland for quite a while. People were entitled to that, but it was conditional um, in the three senses I mentioned, household-based, uh, means-tested, only to the poor, and uh, obligation, it had the obligation to be available on the labor market. What the um, uh, Finnish government then decided to experiment is, uh, okay, let's take a random sample of those people and tell them you get the same amount, but unconditionally. Hmm? Three conditions were lifted. And uh, what did we see? Well, uh, what we saw is that there was a statistically significant difference. And because it's experimental with everything controlled, you can say it's a causal relationship. So there was a, a statistically significant difference in terms of the stress experimented by the people, reduction in stress and reduction in health uh, problem as reported subjectively. Was there a difference in terms of employment? There was no significant difference in the first year of the experiment, but there was a positive um, uh, effect of the unconditionality in the second year of the experiment, but only for the immigrant people. For the native uh, Finnish people, there was no significant effect. There was a little effect, but not st statistically significant, but a very significant impact on, the, on these people. So, these results are interesting. Do they help us to determine whether a basic income, unconditional basic income at that level is sustainable? Of course not, of course not. Because uh, these, people, these are only long-term unemployed people. Of course, in order to determine what is sustainable and not, you need to uh, also give a basic income to people who currently work. And you, are, of course, if some of them decide to work part-time, that's perfectly fine. It's part of the purpose. If some want to interrupt work, it's also part of the purpose. But if too many of them do it, of course, the system will not be financially sustainable. So these experiments will not give an answer to that question. What about the German experiment that's now starting? It's um, a bit of a strange experiment because it's not publicly funded. It's funded by voluntary donations. The aim is to have 120 people uh, taking part in the experiment with an, uh, a control group uh, out of 
uh, people who have to volunteer to be part of the experiment. Um, of course, this experiment uh, will have uh, will not have the limitation of being restricted to long-term unemployed people. There will be a wide variety of people, but it has the major limitation of being restricted uh, in the sample only to volunteers. It's people who have, for some reason, a special interest in trying to have uh, this amount of money in order to uh, be able to do what they wish to do in them. So it's really, it won't be a random sample of the population that massively limits what you can infer uh, from it. Uh, the, moreover, of course, it shares the other limitations. It's only for two years. Of course, if you get that for two years, it's very different from getting something for life. It has uh, and suffers from the so-called uh, Hawthorne effect, which is the, the fact that most of the effect that will be observed or much of the effect that will be observed will be simply due to the fact that people are in an experiment and they know they are being watched rather than what would happen if everyone in society got that same amount. Um, so, the, and, and there is uh, then the, the massive limitation uh, related, which exists also in the Finnish experiment, but is even bigger here, which is that people receive here 1,200 euros in addition to uh, whatever income they have, and whatever income they have is being taxed uh, in the usual way, which means they still get a tax exemption on the first part of their income like everyone else. And of course, this is totally unfeasible if you scale it up, if you uh, give a basic income to everyone in society, of course, you'll have to have a massive, an important fiscal reform, which will replace the, this tax exemption on the lower parts of everyone's income by the basic income. So for all these reasons, let's not be too excited about these experiments. And this holds also for other experiments uh, on a smaller scale, including that are being done in uh, Spain, except, except that each of these experiments is fantastic for the sake of publicity for the idea of basic income. Uh, it forces people to reflect on it, to say, well, maybe it's not uh, so stupid. Uh, does it have, then you discovered some uh, strange things, interesting things, like the fact that it has a more positive effect on the immigrants among the uh, long-term unemployed than among uh, the natives. So it may teach you a number of things, but above all, it's an opportunity for more people to hear about the ID, to start thinking about uh, the ID. And of course, an ID can only come about in a democratic society if enough people have had the opportunity to think about. So finally, and very shortly, uh, in the light of all this is uh, 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 Ingreso Minimo Vital in, uh, introduced in Spain, a uh, step in, uh, the, uh, in the direction of basic income? Absolutely, absolutely. And in my view, uh, an essential step um, uh, for two reasons. And um, uh, one is that uh, it, uh, and it, it's, it's covering, of course, it, as a basic income would need to do, it's um, pulling out of poverty a large number of people. And of course, if you, if you, if you have in place uh, a minimum scheme of this sort, and uh, both the, the financial feasibility, the political feasibility, the administrative feasibility of a basic income is greatly increased. The uh, second reason why I think it's important is, uh, is that it is done at the level that may not please everyone in Catalonia, but because it's done at the Spanish level, the level of the whole of the country. I, uh, a basic income is, uh, of course, economically more stable, uh, not necessarily politically more feasible, but economically more stable if it is done on a larger scale when you have uh, uh, space where people can move freely, uh, both the contributors and the beneficiaries of the scheme. So uh, doing it and doing it in a homogeneous way uh, at the level of a larger entity is, uh, in, if it is possible, politically feasible, it's better. Uh, hence also in little video at the beginning, there's a plea for an EU-wide basic income. Yes, why not? But we are really far uh, from that. So. My answer to the title question of, uh, of this uh, little encounter is uh, def definitely yes, it's important 
to go in uh, that direction. We won't leap, certainly not through a full basic income, we won't jump to it in one go. And uh, introducing it, as was done in this case, and I'm happy that there was such unanimity also in, in the Cortes in uh, favor of the proposal, as there was when the RMI was introduced uh, in the Assemblée Nationale in the 1980s under Rocard. So it's, it's very important and I'm very happy that, uh, that uh, Spain is making this step. Well, awesome. Uh, I'd like to thank the three of you for your interventions. Uh, we could use the last few minutes that I will uh, ask a question uh, to each one of you, maybe see if you would like to add something. Let me ask one question for, to each one of you, but you can answer freely. On the one hand, I would like to ask, I'm sorry, Mark, but you're, uh, you've been muted. We cannot hear you. Um, Mark. Now it's working. Why, uh, sorry, uh, he says, why did you decide that there were 12 months uh, there should be a minimum of 12 months of of uh, tax payment to have access to this uh, um, minimum vital income and what Philippe said is that there was a very strong criticism in terms of, of, of parliamentary noise, but when a votation was required, there was a very high percentage. Because one thing is the noise, the, the background noise, and the other is, is, is to, so we'll see how some of these structural measures are consolidated. And you talked about the feasibility. This is something that, uh, that is not, uh, less important towards maybe towards new in future debates and connected to the last things um, you know that you're in the congress uh, aina uh, and one thing is what you see on tv and then in the commissions when uh, votes are required you don't say you don't really see where victories or defeats uh, exist because la laws can be explained but they have to be voted and philip i'd like to ask uh, well, uh, there's a question. If you had basic income, who would be doing the non-desired uh, or the non-desirable jobs? Because those people that could receive the basic income would probably decide not to do these jobs. It should be in the hands of the uh, technological improvements. Oh, oh, oh. Where, where is that, that precarious type of jobs or the, the precarious type of jobs, hard to do jobs that are usually done from or by people that come from other countries, from, by immigrants. I would let, leave it here. I'm sorry, because there are some people that ask questions, interesting questions. Some people just defend the virtues of basic income, period. But maybe could you be more specific to, to these questions and maybe add a final comment. We have uh, 10 minutes ahead of us. Could we start with this by the same order? Aina, answering your question. Now, sure. Yes, uh, curiously in Spain, there was a unanimity in the approval of uh, vital minimum vital income, but it's, it doesn't respond to the opinion of the majority of the parties of the of the parliamentary uh, spectrum. Uh, well, Pepe said that the social support protected the initiative from the initiatives and the situation of crisis that we are living made it really impossible that the right wing um, could stay away from the votation. This doesn't mean that they are totally against this um, minimum vital income and they will use all the tools they have in, in their hands, and they have many, to try to uh, torpedo uh, this proposal and all that has to do with it. And, and I don't have a shade of a doubt that the right wing of this country is not reasonable, is not going or towards the, the right, it ha doesn't see the light, doesn't realize that we people need social protection. And, but they, they think that uh, are close to the ultra fascist uh, uh, legacy 
also in the area of social protection. And unfortunately, when you want to know that uh, there are some things that uh, uh, need to be re reviewed, you have to see how, what Vox has to say, extreme, extreme right, uh, what Vox has to say about, about the social protection. And they called it uh, uh, something pitiful. People, they say, are lazy, they do ha don't have an intention to work, and they prefer to be saved by uh, uh, father state, and there's no real situation of vulnerability. That's what they said, that this is the kind of, uh, this is the kind of debate that they tried to, to introduce, but it, it failed, thanks to what Pepe said, the, the social protection. I wouldn't really feel honest if I didn't ask a, a, a question. I don't believe we have to disconnect social protection from uh, labor. I don't think this is the real answer to the social needs. I think that this is what we are trying to solve. And the common denominator of all those of us who are here believe that uh, inequality is an unsustainable problem, an acceptable problem, and we're trying to find the best possible solutions to give an answer to the needs of people. I think that we are all in this. But the fact is that we had to get the right answer. Disconnecting the social protection of work uh, will shed light to the darkest areas than shed light to the light. How to incentivate uh, job creation if we don't need to work? Why should we work? This question is something that needs to be answered. I say that because if we are aware of the fact that social support is protecting some proposals, also the social proof can also uh, affect, negatively affect other proposals. And this uh, has to do with fiscality. There is a public opinion that goes against the taxing strategies, as Pepe said, because I think there is an element that they didn't mention that is very important is that there is the social contract is destroyed in our country. And what's, what does that mean? It means that uh, young people in Spain do not believe that they will have a, a retirement or a pension. And this is a fracture. And I don't think that by adding more questions in the labor sphere, uh, we can answer the questions of the social contract. And I doubt that eliminating the centrality of work can help in the new building of a social contract. But on the other hand, I do believe that there are some facts that can help and support newer strat and more positive strategies. The fact of not denying to, to go against precariousness in the labor market directly will contribute to give a greater stability. And secondly, I believe that uh, we shouldn't accept uh, the elimination of, of, of job creation because work will continue existing. The problem is that not that we don't have a job. Well, uh, the labor market is offering jobs that are not uh, in line with the needs we have. And the question that we should answer is that if we are willing to accept that the administrations and the state enter in this game and participate actively without just you know saying, well, let's wait and see and to see if the private market will answer the, the, the society's needs. One of the answers is that the private market, labor market will not participate and will not give an answer to many of the needs that we have as a society. And my proposal is, well, let's participate as a state, let's participate with the public administrations in the development of these needs. Who otherwise will uh, take care of jobs that well, not that, that, that will not, not that will disappear, but would, that we need to increase and to implement. Who's going to do certain jobs? Initially, the, many people think that the state will, and secondly, and connected to this, I think that any proposal that we make, if it is a serious proposal, if it has to do with the, the, the building of a new social contract, it has to respond not only to particular interests but to public interests. Among other things that, well, amongst the other things, well, we have to go through a social and fiscal reform. And with this fiscal re reform, resources are not endless. Governments have to wonder how to uh, correctly administrate these public resources. And I think that this has to do with respect to collective interests that we all have uh, in mind. We have many needs. 
and we had to prioritize things. And one of them is that I believe that in the area of gender, we have many more needs than uh, basic income cannot on its own answer. But there should be other instruments from public administration that respond to the uh, gaps we have in the sphere of, of uh, gender. When, for example, we reach a retirement age and that respond to a welfare state that can uh, generate uh, answers visibly. It's not enough to do this with the basic income because uh, we still need other instruments that need to be uh, used. And that uh, well, and that's it. Insisting on the fact that we need a social contract, a consensus, and a support that protects political proposals. And let me insist on the fiscal reform issue. Thank you. Pepe, very briefly, I think that we should organize another debate about the role of labor and the decentrality of work in, the, in, the, in this sphere, because I myself have I tend to share many of the arguments on one side and the other. Central part para of this work is, is, is key to ensure si no the, fair, si the fair life of, of si people. En qué medida, and uh, es la also, de we have to determine uh, what is the capacity of the basic income. When eliminating unfair jobs, guaranteeing that the available jobs are acceptable, part-time, full-time, no matter. A la persona, no? But eh, it should be a fair job. It has to do with the political feasibility. A second element, which is important to consider. One of the things that makes me think that the work is more important than we think is that so that individuals understand that this public policy framework will be stable and permanent in time so that basic income has the free effects. This should be a permanent thing. Well, people have to understand that their role in society should give them a capacity of negotiation and power versus other agents we have in society and uh, work had to do with this in the building of the welfare states. We had to consider the empowerment of some sectors of society so that society can work at, at full speed. If you lose this, uh, this empowerment role because your job can be done without or you can be automated, etc., this capacity, uh, this political capacity of influence is deteriorated than the capacity uh, so that citizens can maintain basic income in terms of support sustained in time without individuals have a, 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 a position of power uh, that, go, that leads them against society is also a key role. I think that this is a central debate with respect to all this. And answering to, to the question you asked why 12 months of tax payment, this is a basic income. Uh, this is uh, the requisite is that is to understand minimum vital income is not the uh, uh, income for emancipation. This requisite limited the access to those people that were part uh, or were integrated in the economic labor life and that uh, this should be used by uh, some young people who wanted to emancipate uh, and coming from from uh, families with a middle or a high income level. This is not considered as a basic income, but as a minimal vital income. And I think that, well, thank you very much, Philippe. What's your opinion, your final comment? Okay, uh, very quickly, because I need to go to another debate, which is about the question of uh, whether uh, Belgium can uh, manage with a minority government. And so you have some experience in, uh, 
in Spain about uh, trying to manage with a government that doesn't have a majority in Parliament. We are uh, over now um, 15 months after the election, we still don't have a majority uh, being formed, perhaps at the end of this month. And so we have a debate about whether it's really necessary. So it's quite uh, remote from the question of basic income. So I, I would love to engage in more discussion, especially in what uh, Aina and then also Pepe said about the relationship between basic income and work uh, and, and labor. And so what is the, the, the relationship between basic income and both the, the right to work and uh, the obligation to work. But I won't have time uh, for that. I'll just touch uh, on one aspect of it in reply to your question, Mark, uh, which is what about uh, the jobs which uh, no one would like to do if you have an unconditional basic income? Well, there are three possibilities. No one wants to do these jobs. Uh, uh, one possibility is, of course, to uh, automate them and to replace the people by machines. A second possibility, if the first one is uh, regarded as impossible or unprofitable, is uh, to improve the quality of the job. There are many ways in which you can make a job more attractive by treating your workers better, by uh, having a, a daily schedule that is more compatible with uh, family responsibilities, by making uh, the, the work environment less, uh, less noisy, by uh, increasing telework if uh, people want that. So there are many ways in which a job uh, a, a, a job, the quality of a job in these many dimensions uh, can be improved. Now the employers can get away with the shitty jobs because people are forced to accept them. If you give more bargaining people to bargaining power to the people, well, they'll have to make the job sufficiently attractive. And if neither of these two possibilities is either possible or um, uh, acceptable by uh, the employment, there is only one other solution, which is to pay more uh, for these jobs. I like to say in academic context that one day, if a basic income is high enough, the people who clean our toilets at university will be better paid than the academics, than the professors. And I say this is only fair. Uh, so the, the jobs that whose quality and um, is such uh, as perceived by people because there are also lots of differences in the perception of the quality of a job. Some people like to do a certain job and some people, other people hate to do that same job. But if there are jobs that no one likes to do, but these jobs should be better paid than the jobs of, uh, of us academics and other people for whom the job itself uh, has uh, an interest. And so, of course, all this, means that you can't jump to a quick basic income at uh, 1200 euros like in the in the german experiment it has to come gradually and of course it has if it comes gradually it cannot be a full substitute either for uh, social some aspects of social assistance which you need top-ups for the handicapped people for the people living alone etc uh, etc et and of course it's not at all a substitute for uh, social insurance where people pay uh, by way of being workers pay social security uh, contributions that will entitle them to a top up in terms of pensions in terms of unemployment benefits over and above uh, their basic income but all this of course is subject of uh, wider discussion for which we don't have uh, time now but i want to thank the organizers and uh, the other two speakers it really i find it so important to talk across borders about these issues and then to really understand the, the details sometimes of the programs that are being tried in the various countries, the difficulties in, in, in making further steps and that holds also for the reddito di cittadinanza, who supports it, who is against it, uh, what difference does it really make uh, to the people, what are the administrative difficulties that are sometimes enormous and where you give all sorts of rights to the people and then never get what they're entitled to because it's so complicated or stigmatizing to get it, etc. And all this, for all this, we need the discussions across borders. So for all this, uh, muchas gracias. Well, thank uh, the three of you, Felipe and Aina. Thank you so much for being here.
there's no better signal than uh, that, 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 you know, to leave many things to be debated because this means that there are a lot of things to be said. We'll meet again. Uh, there will be a third dialogue, green uh, or red and green, that will have to do with uh, European rescue funds in general. And I'm sure that Ernest Urtasun and other people will be here. We'll tell you more about it. I'd like to thank again the three speakers. All the best, and I hope to see you in person or through the internet uh, transborder debates that are so fruitful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.